Is your current CPU cooler just not cutting it and you want something a little bit new? Well, why not try this from Xilinx? And it's even got RGB effects as well. The front of the box is pretty straightforward. It's black and white, but you have got like a colored diagram of the actual cooler there as well, which looks pretty cool. It also says it's a white edition. There is a black one as well. Also states on there about the ARGB LEDs. It's got a free heat pipe design as well as hydro bearings and it's Intel and AMD compatible. The back of the box is pretty straightforward. It shows you a picture of the white version, the back version as well, all the specifications you need, as well as all the sockets that it will fit on Intel and AMD. Bear in mind, there is no 1700 socket compatibility. Inside the box, you've got some cardboard packaging and some foam, as well as the heat sink and fan, which we'll have a closer look at in a few minutes. You've got the multilingual manual, as well as some information about ARGB lighting, as in the cables. Personally, I would have preferred a QR code, which we could have scanned and got the manual up. Otherwise, you've got two clips here, which allows you to add on an extra fan, so you can have it in a push-pull configuration if you wish. You've got your Intel brackets there and backplate, as well as four screws. And you've also got the AMD mounting bracket as well. And on top of that, you've got some thermal paste they provide. Okay, so this is what the actual heat sink and fan looks like. You've got a nine bladed fan, which spins pretty nicely. Obviously, as we said, there is a black version as well. When we say black, it's just this white bit, which is black. The rest of it's still silver. It's got the Xyrolance logo in the center. One thing to note about this actual fan is while it is a 12 centimeter fan, it is also a 10 centimeter one as well, which you're probably going, how does it do with that? Well, the actual outside is in the bit what's here is actually 12 centimeters from there to there or 120 millimeters but the actual inside part is only 10 centimeters it actually funnels in so it actually gets narrower as it gets closer to the heat sink so that could potentially cause issues or it could actually work as an advantage because you've got a bigger fan on there for a smaller cooler so you actually could be pulling in quite a bit more air now if you will look at the top you can see it's actually more of a black color up there, actually. It's got their logo on, and you've also got those three heat pipes which are running through. It's not six, as it looks like, because obviously the heat pipes go down and around. So that's one end of, of that one. So it's the same heat, heat pipe. So the fan itself is held on by two clips. You can attach another fan if you wish. It doesn't have to be that design, but it would need to be roughly around about 10 centimeter fan for it to actually fit there, which generally they usually add up coming eight or 12. So it, you may struggle getting a fan what 100% fits, uh, but you have got the ability there. If you look at the bottom, it does have a warning label. Please make sure you take that off before you put it on the case. The amount of times we see people actually leave these on. People think I'm joking when I say that, but we actually own a repair store and we get people coming in all the time and bought, build their own machines and they forget to take the little warning sticker off of the bottom. On the bottom, you can see the actual heat pipes going through the actual base. So as you can see, there are three there. You can see the copperized uh, design on it. So that's pretty good. And it feels pretty smooth and shiny as well. So that should make good contact with your CPU. Following around, you can see the heat pipes go up all the way through the actual heat sink, all the way to the top, drawing the heat away from the base. The back, there's not much to see. Now you do have some cable in here, which is pretty long. You've got the PWM connection that's your fab so that will obviously power the fan and if you want the rgb effects to work you do have a 5 volt argb connector as well obviously this needs to plug into a 5 volt three pin argb header on your motherboard or controller for it to work that's where it's got two pins misses one on one pin if you've got a 12 volt header it will not work and potentially will damage it if you actually do use that. So make sure it is a five volt three pin header. Otherwise you're going to have issues. Right. Okay. So first thing you need to do to construct this, I'm just going to show you how to do it for Intel. AMD is very similar, but you just don't need the back plate. But the basics is you get these brackets here and you screw them into the bottom of the base. It's pretty straightforward. You just put two screws in there. There's little holes to screw it in. There's me losing one of the screws. There we go. So let me just screw that in and get the other screw. You never get a screw when you need one. Here we go. Right, so then you screw that second screw in. And if you've done it right, it will look like an X. 
Okay, so that way you know you've done it. Obviously, make sure you're using the right brackets for the right board you're connecting to. And it is actually written on each bracket, the model number of the board it'll work with. So, for example, the 1150X means it works on any 1151, 50, 55 board and so forth. Right, next you need to get your bracket. Peel your 3M tape off. Obviously, we're not using it on, on this board. We're just showing this a demonstration, but you would peel that off. So that would need to go on the back of your motherboard. So if you're not sure which way up this goes, that's the top of the board here. And if you have a look at this actual back plate, it's got two holes on it. Those line up with those two notches there. So if you put the put it on there, it, the corners go in the holes. And you can see the two silver notches there. So it lines up like that. So it's cut specifically to fit that way. Don't force it the other way around. Because if you do, you're going to start bending stuff. What shouldn't bend. Now on the other side of your board, you should have your CPU. You should already have that clean. If you haven't, you can clean it with rubbing alcohol. Or something like, um, called um, Tim Clean, which will allow you to clean it as well. Obviously, always check the instructions of how to do that. If you're not sure, check with your local independent store. But otherwise, once you've got that back plate on, you then need to fit the actual cooler itself. So you just get the cooler, which is here. And then basically, you put it where those holes are. So straightforward. You just put it over those holes. Just sit it there, get your screwdriver and screw it in and obviously do that for all four corners. And that's it fitted. Basically, once you've done that, all you need to do then is hook up your four pin PWM uh, fan connector to the motherboard. Check your motherboard where it actually goes. Every board is slightly different. And again, you will also need to do the same with your five volt ARGB connector you will need to connect that up to your motherboard or a controller as well again every motherboard and controller is slightly different but again please make sure it is a five volt three pin ARGB header down to testing specifications are below in the description the way we actually test things is we use the same machine so all we do is basically replace the CPU cooler we're disconnected from the internet Background tasks are all closed so there is no interference and to make sure all testing is consistent we set the fan speeds at specific speeds so for example 50% or 100% because if you set it at auto mode the fan will automatically adjust itself and then you will get false readings because it will go faster on one test and then slower on another. So here's the test results. As you can see here, we compared it against an Intel stock cooler, and you can see the Xilinx was actually two degrees hotter, but bear in mind, this is the idle test. This is where the machine sits there for 30 minutes and does nothing. So really, it doesn't make too much of a difference in reality. And as you can see, the room temperature on all our testing was 21 and a half degrees Celsius. On this test, we're testing the temperature of the CPU if we do a burning test basically for 30 minutes and you can see we set the fan speed at 50 percent the intel stock cooler actually thermal throttled which means it failed the actual test but the xylence did actually manage and it kept a temperature of around 80 degrees celsius while hot just bear in mind the fan is only running at 50 percent speed and the machine is running flat out working as hard as possible on this next test, we're doing basically the same thing, but this time we're running the fans flat out, so as hard as they can possibly work. The Intel stock cooler did manage to work without thermal throttling, but it did reach 93 degrees Celsius, which is really hot. But the Xilinx X403 Pro was able to cool it down to 68 degrees Celsius, which is very good considering. So for a value cooler, it is actually performing hell of a lot better than an Intel stock cooler. And well, let's put it this way, it looks hell of a lot better as well, especially if you go for the ARGB effects. So in conclusion, well, what we have here is a decent cooler for a very value price. It looks pretty half decent as well. The fan style is slightly different than usual with it being bigger on one side and smaller on the other, which obviously seems to be doing it a benefit because it is actually cooling down pretty well. Don't get me wrong, this isn't going to be the best cooler on the market, but if you're looking for something what looks good and you're also looking to save a few pennies, then this is something you definitely should look at purchasing. Bear in mind there are two versions of this one 
one what's black and one what's white. When we say black and white, the only difference is the actual ring around the fan is one being black and one being white. But otherwise, I would highly recommend this product. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, why don't you watch this video up here, which will tell you the difference between different size water cools and which one actually cools the best. Or why not click this video over here, which will tell you what happens if you forget to put thermal paste on your CPU.